first day of Ramadan, the stream. All right, so it's 9.49 p.m. right now. Um, so today is considered the first day of Ramadan, even that we didn't fast today, because uh, for us Muslims, the day doesn't start at uh, the dawn. Nope, the day starts at the dusk, actually. So uh, our date, uh, and this is important for many reasons, actually, and uh, I can go into it in details later, but uh, the day starts uh, for us at, uh, which is around 6 p.m. That's when our day starts. And uh, that's why the first day from dawn starts today. And it starts by prayers, not fasting, actually, which is the Aisha prayer. So uh, the, the Maghrib prayers, but then the, the, when in Ramadan, there is uh, a tradition uh, that uh, it's not mandatory, but it's uh, customary now. And many just uh, consider it uh, you know, to be a must, which is we pray uh, more after Aisha. So uh, you can do it in gatherings and you can do it alone. Me personally, I prefer doing it alone. I prefer to pray alone. Those extra prayers, all right? Uh, yes, we are encouraged to pray in gatherings as Muslims for many reasons. Um, but those extra prayers, um, uh, me personally, I like doing them, doing them alone, alone because praying alone is uh, something that is is not like meditation because there is a whole different things between that and that but it allows you to be more focused and more concentrated and uh, to be more in the moment so over the years i used to do that and read quran while praying and uh, i might actually do that but here's the thing i wanted for a while now to start reading quran on the stream and i uh, when i started doing all of that gaming stream uh, streaming a while ago actually three months now i think uh while i was doing it i figured that all right ramadan is coming up so i can postpone that until ramadan because quran is a huge part of my being and a huge part of my psyche and philosophies and all of that um, so here's the plan and here's what I'm thinking about doing. I will start reading. Uh, so uh, the Quran, the whole of the Quran, I can bring the actual book here. Actually, let me do that. Ouch. Okay. Don't worry. I just, you know, dropped my, I have a nunchucks here. So I just dropped my nunchucks. So we like to honor the Quran. So the whole book, as you can see, it's it's this this big, all right. So you can uh, read the Quran in couple days, three days. But as Muslims, we are not uh, we are uh, encouraged not to just read it, but to think about it each and every word in it and uh, so uh, it's uh, you know marked into chapters and that's important that to know that this is not how it was uh, sent to our prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or uh, no it was uh, the order that it was sent to him is different from the order it is right now but the order it is at right now is uh, um, agreed upon by all of the collective Muslims because uh, so that we all know what we are reading, you know, and re and we can share the same uh, mentality and share the same uh, message. So I'm gonna start reading soon, and I'm gonna start read the first. Uh, it's uh, <laughs> the Quran. It's in thirty chapters, thirty big chapters. So it can be read over a month. This is just to you know e to make it easier for someone who wants to read it over a month. Um, so I'm gonna hope that I can do that for 30 days. Start reading a chapter per day for the next 30 days of Ramadan. And my not plan, but some kind like you know, I hope that I can uh, 
pause at any moment that uh, I feel like I want to share uh, an explanation or share some ideas about what I'm reading and explain what I can about it. Usually it takes me 30 minutes to read a whole chapter by myself without pausing, without explanation. I don't know how long it will take me now doing that. But I'd like to find out. So let's start, you know, and after that, of course, we're gonna start gaming because, well, I, I just got to platinum yesterday. Yay! I made it to platinum, guys, in TFT. Uh, if you haven't seen that, the video is on YouTube already. So uh, it's uh, 9.54 p.m. now. And let's start from the beginning, the very beginning. And I've uh, opened that. It's oran.com. As you can see and it's uh, translated i'll be reading the arabic and you and i'm gonna be scrolling this way so you can follow uh, by reading the translation if you want and at any point of course i don't know who will watch that when i'll try to upload uh, systematically and you know upload daily uh, um, those parts by themselves on the channel so feel free to ask at any moment you know i might even you know do something now I might uh, adjust the text, you know, add a layer here and make a text add and make the text ask me any questions about what I am doing. Something like that, you know, and let's uh, let's adjust so it's like that, that. And uh, I'd like to move it uh, up there maybe yeah perfect all right and save and now as you can see there is a whole uh, you know uh, it's why in white now I can make it in red I'm gonna make it in red you know so it's it, it's more apparent and anyone can ask me about anything I'm doing can I make a border for it or something yeah I can make a border for it nice let's make the border white then and save you know just something, you know, like that. Yeah, I think that works. Hopefully. Okay. And I'll start now. And this is going to be in Arabic. So I don't know if it's the first time you guys heard me speak in Arabic or not. And yeah, <laughs> sorry. One more thing. When we read Quran, we don't read. No, no. We, uh, it's, I don't know the translation for that word. It's not singing. No, no, no. It's uh, tilawa or, or what. Hopefully what it means in English is uh, we try to, um, don't know the, the exact word, but it's not, what I'm doing is not singing, guys. No, no, it's a type of reading that showcases each and every letter with the exact pronunciation and all of that. Uh, because it's important that it's read exactly as it was sent to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, our Prophet. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألف لام ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه هدى للمتقين الذين يؤمنون بالغيب ويقيمون الصلاة ومما رزقناهم ينفقون والذين يؤمنون بما أنزل إليك وما أنزل من قبلك وبالآخرة هم يوقنون أولئك على هدى من ربهم وأولئك هم المفلحون إن الذين كفروا سواء عليهم أأنذرتهم أم لم تنذرهم لا يؤمنون ختم الله على قلوبهم وعلى سمعهم وعلى أبصارهم غشاوة ولهم عذاب عظيم ومن الناس من يقول آمنا بالله وباليوم الآخر وما هم بمؤمنين يخادعون الله والذين آمنوا وما يخدعون إلا أنفسهم وما يشعرون 
في قلوبهم مرض فزادهم الله مرضا ولهم عذاب أليم بما كانوا يكذبون وإذا قيل لهم لا تفسدوا في الأرض قالوا إنما نحن مصلحون ألا إنهم هم المفسدون ولكن لا يشعرون وإذا قيل لهم آمنوا كما آمن الناس قالوا أنؤمن كما آمن السفهاء ألا إنهم هم السفهاء ولكن لا يعلمون وإذا لقوا الذين آمنوا قالوا آمنا وإذا خلوا إلى شياطينهم قالوا إنا معكم إنما نحن مستهزئون الله يستهزئ بهم ويمدهم في طغيانهم يعمهون أولئك الذين اشتروا الضلالة بالهدى فما ربحت تجارتهم وما كانوا مهتدين مثلهم كمثل الذي استوقد نارا فلما أضاءت ما حوله ذهب الله بنورهم وتركهم في ظلمات لا يبصرون صم بكم عمي فهم لا يرجعون. So I'm gonna try to explain what I just read. Alright. So I'm gonna start because if I don't know, I'm just gonna be reading, and I don't know if anyone would be following what I'm reading by reading the translation here. So let me try uh, start from the beginning and quickly explain what I just read. The first surah in the Quran is Al-Fatiha, and it's it explains a whole lot. If you well, let's read. It starts with Alhamd, which is the praise. And let me <laughs> both here for a little bit because that praise is a big part of my own philosophy and my own methodology about life. So. In my life, everyone in his life faced difficulties of some sort. I know I faced some very difficult moments, but here's the thing. The worst thing that you've experienced is the worst thing that you've experienced. Let me repeat that again. The worst thing that ever has happened to you is the worst thing that ever has happened to you. So if in your life, the worst thing that has ever happened to you is maybe um, failing a year in college or in school or something. This is the worst that has happened to you. But if you've suffered war, for example, in your country, God forbid, then you've failed a year. The fail failing that year will start to feel, you know, uh, very small compared to the war that maybe got your home destroyed or something like that. If you've suffered the loss of some person that you love, this feels much more worse, and so on, and so on, and so on. This can give you two perspective, perspective in life. Number one, you can always see whatever it is that you're suffering from as pretty insignificant compared to others. But here is the thing, that doesn't make you feel less sad or angry or miserable. Nah. Some use that to feel less sad, by the way. Whenever they face some kind of misery or uh, you know, trauma in their life, they in their head or others tell them, all right, no, you, you know, you, it could have been worse. Look at such and such and such. No, no, you are still blessed. And yes, that's true. But here's the thing, that doesn't stop the pain. You will still be feeling the misery and the suffering and all of that. So what is it then? Why do we have that ability to see what others are suffering from, but still can't make use of it for ourselves and, you know, uh, look inward and uh, make the pain feel less painful? Well, here is the thing. Our ability to feel pain is exactly the same as our ability to feel joy and happiness. It's... It affects us the, in, in your, from a neurological perspective. It's same as from a psychological perspective, guys. And let me explain how. You can never feel satisfied if you've never felt hungry. If you've, ne if you've never felt hungry, 
you will never feel the joy of eating and you know getting full if you if you never felt thirsty in your life you, you know <laughs> when you play a game uh, of football or soccer or, or basketball or whatever the game that you're playing or you're working out real hard and sweating and then that first sip of water it gives you joy and dopamine as if it was the only time in your life that you drink drank water same as when you're swimming and god forbid that you know you or diving for example let's go with diving and you're doing free diving as i do most of the time when i can do free diving so that first breath of water after spending let's say a couple minutes underwater that's sorry that first breath of air it feels as if nothing in the world is as precious as that breath of air as humans when we go through life we need to have that ability it's the only ability that if you can have you can keep at balance no matter what's happening around you because it gives you clarity all right we live throughout our life and we have that distinct ability as humans to measure everything measure everything we measure everything we measure our money our wealth our heights our bodies our muscles our strengths we measure that's how we go through life and our ability to measure is really skewed guys and it's 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 really uh, i'm talking here a little bit about physics most of our measuring ability is there is a derivative of time by the way time is the only value is, is the only constant that we know of and even though we can't measure it quite right there is an amazing book about that it's narrated by benedict cumberbatch it's uh, about time and i can't remember the name yet but you can just search about uh, the book of time narrated by benedict cumberbatch and you'll find it and you will know how skewed our ability to measure time is so we always need a way to recalibrate our ability to measure everything and anything and because we go through life by those two things measuring and feeling the only thing that can calibrate you all the time at any time is thanking god and the concept of god here for a non-muslim or a non-religious person can be uh, daunting at first just know that you don't need to think of god by your own uh, train, uh, mind that was trained on media and trained on you know uh, an old guy with a white beard no 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 you need to think of god as power the first thing that can re make someone who doesn't know what god is and for us the only god is allah it's the most powerful when we as muslims when we say allahu akbar which has become like a meme you know uh, in most comedic movies in hollywood and all of that allahu akbar means translates to god is the greatest and the greatness here is over everything we can't be in control as humans of anything in our lives if we don't understand that because you walk through life thinking that you're in control but it takes maybe even a tiny bug not a virus maybe anything that can show you at almost every, all points all time that you are not in control of anything actually no that's why that destabilizes you anyone who suddenly realizes that that a bit, that knowledge that he's not in control of anything so he starts thinking all right i need something to trust i need a source of power i need to know what's in control then you have to remember it's god and you recalibrate your psyche through life and you're measuring everything and your feelings by thanking that god thanking allah for everything because by doing that you start realizing all right i can measure my suffering by thanking allah for everything that i 
am blessed with and we are blessed by so many things that we can't count and the only way that we realize we realize the existence of those things is by losing them so before that happens we just need to realize their existence so as i said you never realize how much time you have until you run out of it you never realize how much you enjoy the company of your parents until you lose one or both of them you never realize how much you there is a quote by uh, andy bernard from the office you know ed holmes in the office and it's an amazing perfect quote that i can you know uh, say here which is you never know it's the good old time uh, he says i wish that someone will tell us that the good old times is the times that we're living in right now before they pass it's perfect it's amazing it's brilliant yes we have the, the, the nostalgia for everything that has passed but if while we were living in that moment back then someone came and told us you know years from now you're gonna miss that moment and wish you came back imagine how much joy and enjoyment you will put into that moment then so that recalibrating you know uh, procedure that's how we start the quran by saying alhamdulillah rabbil alameen or as it's translated here all praise is for allah lord of all the worlds and uh, the all worlds here is uh, you know, it's it's uh, maybe a literal translation, but Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Al-Alameen or Al-Alameen here can be translated into many things actually, not just worlds, it can be translated to all things in beings, all all, all things yeah, it's translated into worlds, but just because I don't want anyone who's listening to that their mind going to Marvel movies or something like that, no, 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 it's all beings and then we continue with Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, the most compassionate, most merciful. For me, I need you to know that as a Muslim, I was born Muslim, I was raised as a Muslim, and I've read Al-Fatiha maybe countless number of times, and I have read uh, those words here countless number of times. Um, but I haven't really stopped to think about each and every word until I needed to or I got the time and uh, mental ability to do so. So, as I said earlier about the thing, how we go through life measuring everything and how we need a way to recalibrate our uh, psyche all the time, you need to, um, that by itself can drive you, drive you into worlds of terror. This is, by the way, this part that I've just said in the beginning, can drive anyone who thinks about it long enough into absolute fear and terror and uh, unfortunately the, uh, many go agnostic and stuff like that because once you realize that everything is relative to your ability to measure and then you start looking to measure everything the world you start on realizing that you are in no control of anything you can't control anything and how terrifying that world that we live in can be if if a virus or a bug can su suddenly turn your life 180 this is the thing guys with the, the reasons that we fear the dark it's not because we fear what's in the dark no no we fear the dark because we can't control what's happening around us we as humans need control all the time that's the in if we have control we're all right we're okay if we lose control, that's why we are afraid when we are at sea. That's why we are uh, that the thing that causes the most fear it's loss of control. And once you realize that that you have no control whatsoever, what is it that you need? You need someone to reassure you that it's all right. God, who is the uh, most powerful, who is the greatest, who is who deserves all the praise. This is. The first thing that the Quran tells you about God after you praise him that he is the most compassionate and most merciful and if I end today's stream with that here I think I've, I'm alright because here's the thing we, when we are born as humans 
The first thing we rely on is the compassion and the mercy of our parents. Without compassion or mercy, we, we don't grow. We, we, we are born. And this is, you need to understand that we are not very different from where we were born right now. When you are born, you are powerless. You are in no control of anything whatsoever. And your parents feed you and fend for you and care for you because they have compassion and mercy and love and emotion. And there is a saying by our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that God's mercy and compassionate and love for, uh, for us, it's, it's more than the love and the, and, the, and the love and the compassion and the mercy uh, of a woman who, for her newborn. Of a mother for her newborn. And this is what the Quran says here. The first thing, ye all praise is for Allah, who is Lord of all worlds, all beings, and who is that Allah? He is the most compassionate, most merciful. By the way, most, most than anything, more than anything, than your mother, than your father, than, and that, after that first invitation to recalibrate your thinking, your psyche, or everything, that comes after that immediately telling you that God is the most merciful, most compassionate, to give you reassurance. All right, exactly when I used to teach, not exactly, but there, well, I, I, I explained to myself as when I used to teach swimming to a couple of my friends. When they, were, they first saw me swim, and I'm a very good swimmer. I can free dive, I can save uh, up to two people at a time. So they, couldn't even get in the water before that. And they saw me in the water and I told them, plain easy, as it was told to me, I told them, anything that can happen to you, I can get you out of the water. I've shown them that uh, there were two of my other friends and I got them out of the water. They couldn't swim at all and I got them out. All they had to do is just stop moving. So I told them, all right, do whatever, you're not gonna drown, I'm here. That immediately took all the fear out and gave them some, some courage to test, to try, to live, to experience, to enjoy. It's the same with life. If you realize that exactly as if you've never swam, uh, you've never gotten the water before. Now imagine that you got in the water. And you are terrified, you're afraid, you're gonna get tense, you're gonna drown. And then someone comes and tells you, Nah, don't worry. I love you, I care for you more than your mother when you were a newborn, and I'm here. I am the most powerful, I'm the most, I'm the greatest, I'm here. Now you're gonna feel the courage to actually look around, experience, enjoy, and little by little you're gonna start swimming, and become that source of power for someone else. And this is the thing, this is the, the thing here that, you know, when you go, if you lines under what it's exactly what i read us as humans and the the message that we are here with it's not just to you know be newborn all the way no no be uh, you know as uh, weak and uh, lose all power and just live at the mercy of our god without actually doing anything it's no 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 all of that is, are the tools to enable us to be as strong as we can be. It's all, it's, it's all a story for, of power, for me. Enabling you to be the best version of yourself, to help someone else, and build. And this is, by the way, that's in the core of our Islam. So, as Muslims, when we ask, all right, what does, what does God want from us? And God wants from you two things, to obey him, and to build. That's Imaratul Ardu Ibadatullahi Imaratul Ard translates to obeying God and build. And here's the thing obeying doesn't mean being uh, obedient for no reason or no logic or you know doing what you were told without thinking about it. No, 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 no. Obeying is the thing that's gonna get you the tools to build. You will never have a tool to build without actually obeying. It's exactly 
as that swimming metaphor that I, shows, that I just said, without, well, not gonna say obeying the, who's teaching you, but without giving in, without surrendering yourself to the water and to the, you know, to the experience and adapting, you will never be able to swim and do other things. And for you to do that, you need to understand your ability to control or not control. You need to understand your positions or you need to understand how to measure. And it goes from the start again that thanks to God who is the most powerful and he is the most compassionate and the most merciful. That took a while there and uh, it's 30 minutes in and usually by that 30 minutes I, was, I would have been done with reading uh, the first chapter. So I'm thinking now if I keep doing that because when I start talking about that it my thoughts will never end guys. I, it all ties into each other for me and so I'm thinking that I'm gonna continue reading now and unless something very immediate and very urgent uh, pops into my head I'm gonna start explaining a little bit tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow I can't explain it all in one month I can't explain it all in one hour it's impossible so uh, but I wanna read I enjoy the reading so I'm gonna keep reading and uh, hopefully 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 we can keep going back to some of the lines that we've read that we've read and explain them later so I was here um, when I start reading, you hear me saying every time before reading, "A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim." Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, and uh, that translates into uh, the first line, "A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim." That uh, God, please protect me from the, the Satan, from Satan, from the devil. Um, uh, and there is a whole logic behind that. And Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, that translates to. Uh, we open by saying the name of our God, the most merciful, the most passionate. Um, and there is a, another logic for that, by the way. But we, as Muslims, we use those two lines every time, all the time. And uh, as Quran is the most, is one of the most honored things you can do in life. So it's only logical that you start them by using those two lines. So. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أو كصهيب من السماء فيه ظلمات ورعد وبرق يجعلون أصابعهم في آذانهم من الصواعق حذر الموت والله محيط بالكافرين يكاد البرق يخطف أبصارهم كلما أضاء لهم مشوا فيه وإذا أظلم عليهم قاموا ولو شاء الله ولو شاء الله لا ذهب بسمعهم وأبصارهم إن الله على كل شيء قدير يا أيها الناس اعبدوا ربكم الذي خلقكم والذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون الذي جعل لكم الأرض فراشا والسماء والسماء بناء وأنزل من السماء ماء فأخرج به من الثمرات رزقا لكم فلا تجعلوا لله أندادا وأنتم تعلمون وإن كنتم في ريب مما نزلنا على عبدنا فأتوا بسورة من مثله وادعوا شهداءكم من دون الله إن كنتم صادقين فإن لم تفعلوا ولن تفعلوا فاتقوا النار التي وقودها الناس والحجارة أعدت للكافرين وبشر الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات أن لهم جنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار كلما رزقوا منها من ثمرة رزقا قالوا هذا الذي رزقنا من قبل وأتوا به متشابها ولهم فيها أزواج مطهرة وهم فيها خالدون uh, This is the 25th line or 25th it's not line it's called it's it's called ayah or verse or uh, ayah is translated into in Arabic it, into marvel not marvel marvel no no it's something marvelous it's 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 a miracle each and every uh, verse is a miracle each word each line each letter is a miracle and the reason for that is 
you go through life thinking that you the the way that we start life guys by the way it's it's uh, based on instinct okay if you were born on an island and you had nothing around you whatsoever the first thing that's gonna move you is your hunger first you want to feel safe actually and then you're, you're feeling both at the same time needing for shelter and needing for food they go uh, you know hand on hand hand in hand so you start wanting to get food and to feel safe but that's exactly what animals do what separates us from animals it's our ability to it's our consciousness which translates into our ability to imagine animals don't have imagination by the way the one of the very one of the most important traits for consciousness is our ability to imagine and when we imagine we can create because you can't create something that you haven't imagined and imagination is a function of time because you can't imagine something and then it just you know exists no you imagine it and you work toward it while remembering what you've done and thinking about what should be done this is all function of time now when we do that as humans we feel powerful so imagine if you are 10, 20 guys on an island and you've all suddenly realized, all right, now we're here and you don't know anything about anything before existing on that island. Then you go through life, all right, I'm hungry, I need shelter. Then you're gonna start, someone is gonna be more powerful, someone's gonna be taller, someone's gonna be more muscular. And after few fights, many, many, many fights, you will all just realize it's better to you know live together than die alone as the lost series so you will start forming societies and start forming groups and all of that and then you will still find that evil exists and it's very important to think about that why does evil still exist even if we start humanity from scratch well because our ability to think and rationalize is different from one another. Evil doesn't exist as a first, you know, uh, impulse. No, no, no. As humans, we, our, all of us, our first impulse is to do good, not to do bad. It's only when we start rationalizing for ourselves what we do that our deeds start to be colored as evil deeds let me explain that your ability to think about the future maybe you're thinking about two three four days in the future but someone else's ability to think in the future goes maybe a month in the future so right now if there is one apple in front of you guys you might think all right i want to eat that apple right now because if i don't i'm gonna be hungry but someone else might tell you no 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 Let's divide that owl into rations and eat that eat those rations gradually throughout the month. You both are hungry. You both want to eat. He's thinking about a month in the future of survival and building and all of the and living. You're thinking, all right, I'm hungry now. He might be able to control his impulse and actually eat his ration and stop eating more. Someone else will think, all right, based on logic. What guarantees that we're going to live for another week? Why don't we just eat now and in a week from now, we can either find a new owl, we can find another type of fruit. Anything can happen. You are right, he is right. What dictates what should be done? Whoever is most powerful between you both is going to be the one who says what should happen. And what I've just said here, is the political party system in USA between Republicans and Democrats. It's the same. Both are right. And both have logic. And both have doctors and PhDs and professors in both parties. But it's all about who is most powerful. And whoever is most powerful is the one who lays the rule of the land. Now, a third party will come and he's gonna be more powerful than you two and he's gonna say what should happen and a fourth party and the first party 
and then you'll start fighting again. And that's how humanity <coughs> lived for millennia, fighting between the, each other, because everyone thinks that he is the right person. And it's only power that rules, and only power that dictates. And no one actually knows what will happen, because no one knows what will happen in the future. So, what should be done? If humanity had no religion, if there was no God, we would have gone extinct like that. Extinction. Nothing else would have prevented us from going extinct. And by the way, many, many philosophers who aren't religious, by the way, share the same belief, which is us not going extinct so far is a miracle in itself. It, 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 it can't be explained. But we are still here. So others say, yeah, we are on our way to go extinct. Okay, sure, why not, bro? But as we are here right now, let's think about why we haven't gone extinct yet. For sure, it's not because we haven't fought a lot. We have fought a lot. No, we haven't gone extinct because the ideals and the methodologies and the philosophies and the concepts of how we should think existed and was sent to us from the only one who can know what will happen in the future. And that is the one who created the future and the one who created the time and it's God and it's Allah. Most of the concepts in religion existed outside of the consciousness of the human ability to think. And you can argue against that for millennia. And it has been done, it has been argued against that for millennia. And no one ever proved anything other than just, you know, small uh, uh, sound bites here and there. No thing outside of human, nothing in the human consciousness by itself can explain why there is good and evil. Those terms, why we hate evil, why we like good, th that doesn't exist in the human psyche and the human consciousness. And good and evil are relative. You can't say what's good and what's evil outside, you know, if you thought about them in, in, in pure logic. There is an, in pure logic, there is no good, there is no evil. Now, if we think about all of that and read those past 25 verses that I've just read, you can understand the whole concept, the whole shebang, the whole story. And the reason that I stopped at uh, verse 25 here, it's because those are the first 25 verses that we ever, uh, that my father told me and my brother to memorize by heart when we were uh, seven years old. I was seven, my brother was ten, and uh, when my brother was seven, he started memorizing, and uh, when I uh, got to seven, I started memorizing as well. And as Muslims, that's when we are taught to start memorizing. We should start earlier, and we do start earlier, but as humans, when we get to seven, we start having the ability to have uh, consciousness, uh, you know, uh, no, no, sorry, it's able to have uh, rational conversation, you know. We start uh, and our memories become more vivid and all of that. It's at 7 and at 10, we go through another transformation. It's been confirmed biologically, it's been confirmed uh, psychologically. And those are m marks in the age of any Muslim uh, that at 7, you should start learning how to pray. Before 7, it's all right. If, it's not, not, not right. No, before 7, you can. we can all laugh about it. But at seven, we start actually, all right, are you praying now? Let's talk about it. Why are not you praying? How do you pray? All of that. By 10, no, it's a serious matter now. If you don't pray, something's wrong. So praying and Quran, they come again hand in hand. So what I've just explained about the whole philosophy of human beings and how we exist and all of that, that was explained. And I can go on length explaining what I've just read here about that exactly about all the answer because what I've laid are the questions I haven't talked about the answers I will tomorrow not now so uh, now I'm gonna continue reading إن الله لا يستحي أن يضرب مثلا ما بعوضة فما فوقها 
فأما الذين آمنوا فيعلمون أنه الحق من ربهم وأما الذين كفروا فيقولون ماذا أراد الله بهذا مثلا يضل به كثيرا ويهدي به كثيرا وما يضل به إلا الفاسقين الذين ينقضون عهد الله من بعد ميثاقه ويقطعون ما أمر الله به أن يوصل ويفسدون في الأرض أولئك هم الخاسرون كيف تكفرون بالله وكنتم أمواتا فأحياكم ثم يميتكم ثم يحييكم ثم إليه ترجعون هو الذي خلق لكم ما في الأرض جميعا ثم استوى إلى السماء فسواهن سبع سماوات وهو بكل شيء عليم وإذ قال ربك للملائكة إني جاعل في الأرض خليفة قالوا أتجعل فيها من يفسد فيها ويسفك الدماء ونحن نسبح بحمدك ونقدس لك قال إني أعلم ما لا تعلمون وعلم آدم الأسماء كلها ثم عرضهم على الملائكة فقال بأوني بأسماء هؤلاء إن كنتم صادقين قالوا سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم قال يا آدم بئهم بأسمائهم فلما أنبأهم بأسمائهم قال ألم أقل لكم إني أعلم غيب السماوات والأرض وأعلم ما تبدون وما كنتم تكتمون وإذ قلنا للملائكة اسجدوا لآدم فسجدوا إلا إبليس أبا واستكبر وكان من الكافرين وقلنا يا آدم اسكن أنت وزوجك الجنة وكلا منها رغدا حيث شئتما ولا تقرب هذه الشجرة فتكونا من الظالمين فأزلهما الشيطان عنها فأخرجهما مما كان فيه وقلنا اهبطوا بعضكم لبعض عدو ولكم في الأرض مستقر ومتاع إلى حين فتلقى آدم من ربه كلمات فتاب عليه إنه هو التواب الرحيم قل نهبطوا منها جميعا فإما يأتينكم مني هدى فمن تبع هداي, فمن تبع هداي فلا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون والذين كفروا وكذبوا بآياتنا أولئك أصحاب النار هم فيها خالدون يا بني إسرائيل اذكروا نعمتي التي أنعمت عليكم وأوفوا بعهدي أوف بعهدكم وإياي فارهبون وآمنوا بما أنزلت مصدقا لما معكم ولا تكونوا أول كافر به ولا تشتروا بآياتي ثمنا قليلا وإياي فاتقون ولا تلبسوا الحق بالباطل وتكتموا الحق وأنتم تعلمون وأقيموا الصلاة وآتوا الزكاة واركعوا مع الراكعين أتأمرون الناس بالبر وتنسون أنفسكم وأنتم تتلون الكتاب أفلا تعقلون واستعينوا بالصبر والصلاة وإنها لكبيرة إلا على الخاشعين الذين يظنون أنهم ملاقوا ربهم وأنهم إليه راجعون يا بني إسرائيل اذكروا نعمتي التي أنعمت عليكم وأني فضلتكم على العالمين واتقوا يوما لا تجزي نفس عن نفس شيئا ولا يقبل منها شفاعة ولا يؤخذ منها عدل ولا هم ينصرون وإذ نجيناكم من آل فرعون يسومونكم سوء العذاب يذبحون أبناءكم ويستحيون نساءكم وفي ذلك بلاء من ربكم عظيم وإذ هرقنا بكم البحر فأنجيناكم وأغرقنا آل فرعون وأنتم تنظرون وإذ وعدنا موسى أربعين ليلة ثم اتخذتم العجل من بعده وأنتم ظالمون ثم عفونا عنكم من بعد ذلك لعلكم تشكرون وإذ آتينا موسى الكتاب والفرقان لعلكم تهتدون وإذ قال موسى لقومه يا قوم إنكم ظلمتم أنفسكم باتخاذكم العجل فتوبوا إلى بارئكم فقتلوا أنفسكم ذلكم خير لكم عند بارئكم فتاب عليكم إنه هو التواب الرحيم وإذا قلتم يا موسى لن نؤمن لك حتى نرى الله جهرة فأخذتكم الصاعقة وأنتم تنظرون 
ثم بعثناكم من بعد موتكم لعلكم تشكرون وظللنا عليكم الغمام وأنزلنا عليكم المن والسلوى كلوا من طيبات ما رزقناكم وما ظلمون ولكن كانوا أنفسهم يظلمون وإذ قلنا دخلوا هذه القرية فكلوا منها حيث شئتم رغدا ودخلوا الباب سجدا وقولوا حطة مغفر لكم خطاياكم وسنزيد المحسنين فبدل الذين ظلموا قولا غير الذي قيل لهم فأنزلنا على الذين ظلموا رجزا من السماء بما كانوا يفسقون وإذا استسقى موسى لقومه فقل نضرب بعصاك الحجر فانفجرت منه اثنت عشرة عينا قد علم كل أناس مشربهم كلوا واشربوا من رزق الله ولا تعثوا في الأرض مفسدين وإذ قلتم يا موسى لن نصبر على طعام واحد فادع لنا ربك يخرج لنا مما تنبت الأرض من بقلها وقثائها وفومها وعدسها وبصلها قال أتستبدلون الذي هو أدنى بالذي هو خير اهبطوا مصر فإن اهبطوا مصرا فإن لكم ما سألتم وضربت عليهم الزلة والمسكنة وباءوا بغضب من الله ذلك بأنهم كانوا يكفرون بآيات الله ويقتلون النبيين بغير الحق ذلك بما عصوا وكانوا يعتدون إن الذين آمنوا والذين هادوا والنصارى والصابئين من آمن بالله واليوم الآخر وعمل صالحا فلهم أجرهم عند ربهم ولا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون وإذ أخذنا ميثاقكم ورفعنا فوقكم طور خذوا ما آتيناكم بقوة واذكروا ما فيه لعلكم تتقون ثم توليتم من بعد ذلك فلولا فضل الله عليكم ورحمته لكنتم من الخاسرين ولقد علمتم الذين اعتدوا منكم في السبت فقلنا لهم كونوا قردة خاسئين فجعلناها نكالا لما بين يديها وما خلفها وموعظة للمتقين وإذ قال موسى لقومه إن الله يأمركم أن تذبحوا بقرة قالوا أتتخذنا هزوا قال أعوذ بالله أن أكون من الجاهلين قالوا ادع لنا ربك يبين لنا ما هي قال إنه يقول إنها بقرة لا فارض ولا بكر عوان بين ذلك فافعلوا ما تؤمرون قالوا ادع لنا ربك يبين لنا ما لونها قال إنه يقول إنها بقرة صفراء فاقع لونها تسر الناظرين قال ادع لنا ربك يبين لنا ما هي إن البقرة شابه علينا وإنا إن شاء الله لمهتدون قال إنه يقول إنها بقرة لا ذلول تثير الأرض ولا تسقي الحرث مسلمة لا شية فيها قالوا الآن جئت بالحق فذبحوها وما كادوا يفعلون وإذ قتلتم نفسا فادارأتم فيها والله مخرج ما كنتم تكتمون فقل نضربوه ببعضها كذلك يحيي الله الموتى ويريكم آياته لعلكم تعقلون ثم قصت قلوبكم من بعد ذلك فهي كالحجارة أو أشد قسوة وإن من الحجارة لما يتفجر منه الأنهار وإن منها لما يشقق فيخرج منه الماء وإن منها لما يهبط من خشية الله وما الله بغافل عما تعملون أفتطمعون أن يؤمنوا لكم وقد كان فريق منهم يسمعون كلام الله ثم يحرفونه من بعد ما عقلوه وهم يعلمون وإذا لقوا الذين آمنوا قالوا آمنا وإذا خلا بعضهم إلى بعض قالوا أتحدثونهم بما فتح الله عليكم ليحاجوكم به عند ربكم أفلا تعقلون أولا يعلمون أن الله يعلم ما يسرون وما يعلمون ومنهم أميون لا يعلمون الكتاب إلا ماني وإنهم إلا يظنون فويل للذين يكتبون الكتاب بأيديهم ثم يقولون هذا من عند الله ليشتروا به ثمنا قليلا فويل لهم مما كتبت أيديهم وويل لهم مما يكسبون وقالوا لن تمسنا النار إلا أياما معدودة قل أتخذتم عند الله عهدا فلن يخلف الله عهده أم تقولون على الله ما لا تعلمون 
بلى من كسب سيئة وأحاطت به خطيئته فأولئك أصحاب النار هم فيها خالدون والذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات أولئك أصحاب الجنة هم فيها خالدون وإذ أخذنا ميثاق بني إسرائيل لا تعبدون إلا الله وبالوالدين إحسانا وذي القربى واليتامى والمساكين وقولوا للناس وقولوا للناس حسنا وأقيموا الصلاة وآتوا الزكاة ثم توليتم إلا قليلا منكم وأنتم معرضون وإذ أخذنا ميثاقكم لا تسفكون دماءكم ولا تخرجون أنفسكم من دياركم ثم أقررتم وأنتم تشهدون ثم أنتم هؤلاء تقتلون أنفسكم وتخرجون فريقا منكم من ديارهم تظاهرون عليهم بالإثم والعدوان وإن يأتوكم أسارة فادوهم وهو محرم عليكم إخراجهم أفتؤمنون ببعض الكتاب وتكفرون ببعض فما جزاء من يفعل ذلك منكم إلا خزي في الحياة الدنيا ويوم القيامة يردون إلى أشد العذاب وما الله بغافل عما تعملون أولئك الذين اشتروا الحياة الدنيا بالآخرة فلا يخفف عنهم العذاب ولا هم ينصرون ولقد آتينا موسى الكتاب وقفينا من بعده بالرسل وآتينا عيسى بن مريم البينات وأيدناه بروح القدس أفكلما جاءكم رسول بما لا تهوى أنفسكم استكبرتم ففريقا كذبتم وفريقا تقتلون وقالوا قلوبنا غلف بل لعنهم الله بكفرهم فقليلا ما يؤمنون ولما جاءهم كتاب من عند الله مصدق لما معهم وكانوا من قبل يستفتحون على الذين كفروا فلما جاءهم ما عرفوا كفروا به فلعنة الله على الكافرين بئس ما اشتروا به أنفسهم أن يكفروا بما أنزل الله بغيا أن ينزل الله من فضله على من يشاء من عباده فباءوا بغضب على غضب وللكافرين عذاب مهين وإذا قيل لهم آمنوا بما أنزل الله قالوا نؤمن بما أنزل علينا ويكفرون بما وراءه وهو الحق مصدقا لما معهم قل فلم تقتلون أنبياء الله من قبل إن كنتم مؤمنين ولقد جاءكم موسى بالبينات ثم اتخذتم العجل من بعده وأنتم ظالمون وإذ أخذنا ميثاقكم ورفعنا فوقكم الطور خذوا ما آتيناكم بقوة واسمعوا قالوا سمعنا وعصينا وأشربوا في قلوبهم العجل وأشربوا في قلوبهم العجل بكفرهم قل بئس ما يأمركم به إيمانكم إن كنتم مؤمنين قل إن كانت لكم الدار الآخرة عند الله خالصة من دون الناس فتمنوا الموت إن كنتم صادقين ولن يتمنوه أبدا بما قدمت أيديهم والله عليم بالظالمين ولتجدنهم أحرص الناس على حياة ومن الذين أشركوا يود أحدهم لو يعمر ألف سنة وما هو بمزحزحه من العذاب أن يعمر والله بصير بما يعملون قل من كان عدوا لجبريل فإنه نزله على قلبك بإذن الله مصدقا لما بين يديه وهدى وبشرى للمؤمنين من كان عدوا لله وملائكته ورسله وجبريل وميكال فإن الله عدو للكافرين ولقد أنزلنا إليك آيات بينات وما يكفر بها إلا الفاسقون أو كلما عاهدوا عهدا نبذه فريق منهم بل أكثرهم لا يؤمنون ولما جهاءهم رسول من عند الله مصدق لما معهم نبذ فريق من الذين أوتوا الكتاب كتاب الله وراء ظهورهم و... ولما جاءهم رسول من عند الله مصدق لما معهم نبذ فريق من الذين أوتوا الكتاب كتاب الله وراء ظهورهم كأنهم لا يعلمون واتبعوا ما تتل الشياطين على ملك سليمان وما كفر سليمان ولكن الشياطين كفروا يعلمون الناس السحر وما أنزل على الملكين بباب لهاروت وماروت وما يعلمان من أحد حتى يقولا إنما نحن فتنة فلا تكفر فيتعلمون منهما ما يفرقون به بين المرء وزوجه وما هم بضارين به من أحد إلا بإذن الله 
ويتعلمون ما يضرهم ولا ينفعهم ولقد علموا لمن ولقد علموا لمن اشتراه ما له في الآخرة من خلاق ولبئس ما شروا به أنفسهم لو كانوا يعلمون ولو أنهم آمنوا واتقوا لمثوبة من عند الله خير لو كانوا يعلمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا تقولوا راعنا وقولوا انظرنا واسمعوا وللكافرين عذاب أليم ما يود الذين كفروا من أهل الكتاب ولا المشركين أن ينزل عليكم من خير من ربكم والله يختص برحمته من يشاء والله ذو الفضل العظيم وما ما ننسخ, ما ننسخ من آية أو ننسها نأتي بخير منها أو مثلها أو مثلها ما ننسخ من آية أو ننسها نأتي بخير منها أو مثلها ألم تعلم أن الله على كل شيء قدير ألم تعلم أن الله له ملك السماوات والأرض وما لكم من دون الله من ولي ولا نصير أم تريدون أن تسألوا رسولكم كما سئل موسى من قبل ومن يتبدل الكفر بالإيمان فقد ضل سواء السبيل ود كثير من أهل الكتاب لو يردونكم من بعد إيمانكم كفارا حسدا من عند أنفسهم من بعد ما تبين لهم الحق فاعفوا واصفحوا حتى يأتي الله بأمره إن الله على كل شيء قدير وأقيموا الصلاة وآتوا الزكاة وما تقدموا لأنفسكم من خير تجدوه عند الله إن الله بما تعملون بصير وقالوا لن يدخل الجنة إلا من كان هودا أو نصارا تلك أمانيهم قل هاتوا برهانكم إن كنتم صادقين بلى من أسلم وجهه لله وهو محسن فله أجره عند ربه ولا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون وقالت اليهود, ل... وقالت اليهود ليست النصارى على شيء وقالت النصارى ليست اليهود على شيء وهم يتلون الكتاب كذلك قال الذين لا يعلمون مثل قولهم فالله يحكم بينهم يوم القيامة فيما كانوا فيه يختلفون ومن أظلم ممن منع مساجد الله أن يذكر فيها اسمه وسعى في خرابها أولئك ما كان لهم أن يدخلوها إلا خائفين لهم في الدنيا خزي ولهم في الآخرة عذاب عظيم ولله المشرق والمغرب فأينما تولوا فتم وجه الله إن الله واسع عليم I'll just check uh, how much we're at right now because this is here uh, is not marked as the Mus'haf or the Quran that I'm holding and I just want to know uh, when will the first chapter be at? Uh, yeah, I mean, which verse is gonna mark the first chapter ending? So that's what I'm doing right now. All right, we're almost there. We need to go to uh, verse 141. This is 115 now, and we need to go to verse 141. All right. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وقالوا اتخذ الله ولدا سبحانه بل له ما في السماوات والأرض كل له قانتون بديع السماوات والأرض وإذا قضى أمرا فإنما يقول له كن فيكون وقال الذين لا يعلمون لو لا يكلمنا الله أو تأتينا آية كذلك قال الذين من قبلهم مثل قولهم تشابهت قلوبهم قد بينا الآيات لقوم يوقنون إنا أرسلناك بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا ولا تسأل عن أصحاب الجحيم ولن ترضى عنك اليهود ولا النصارى حتى تتبع ملتهم قل إن هدى الله هو الهدى ولئن اتبعت أهواءهم بعد الذي جاءك من العلم ما لك من الله من ولي ولا نصير الذين آتيناهم الكتاب يتلونه حق تلاوته أولئك يؤمنون به ومن يكفر به فأولئك هم الخاسرون 
يا بني إسرائيل اذكروا نعمتي التي أنعمت عليكم وأني فضلتكم على العالمين واتقوا يوما لا تجزي نفس عن نفس شيئا ولا يقبل منها عدل ولا تنفعها شفاعة ولا هم ينصرون وإذا ابتلى إبراهيم ربه بكلمات فأتمهن قال إني جاعلك للناس إماما قال ومن ذريتي قال لا ينال عهدي الظالمين قال لا ينال عهد الظالمين وإذ جعلنا البيت مثابة للناس وأمنا واتخذوا من مقام إبراهيم مصلى وعهدنا إلى إبراهيم وإسماعيل أن طهر بيتي للطائفين والعاكفين والركع السجود وإذ قال إبراهيم رب اجعل هذا بلدا آمنا وارزق أهله من الثمرات من آمن منهم بالله واليوم الآخر قال ومن كفر فأمتعه قليلا ثم أضطره إلى عذاب النار وبئس المصير وإذ يرفع إبراهيم القواعد من البيت وإسماعيل ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم ربنا واجعلنا مسلمين لك ومن ذريتنا أمة مسلمة لك وأرنا مناسكنا وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم ربنا ابعث فيهم رسولا منهم يتلو عليهم آياتك ويعلمهم الكتاب والحكمة ويزكيهم إنك أنت العزيز الحكيم ومن يرغب عن ملة إبراهيم, ومن يرغب عن ملة إبراهيم إلا من سفه نفسه ولقد اصطفيناه في الدنيا وإنه في الآخرة لمن الصالحين وإذا قال, إب... وإذ قال له ربه أسلم قال أسلمت لرب العالمين ووصى بها إبراهيم بنيه ويعقوب يا بني إن الله اصطفى لكم الدين فلا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون أم كنتم شهداء إذا حضر يعقوب الموت إذ قال لبنيه ما تعبدون من بعدي قالوا نعبد إلهك وإله آبائك إبراهيم وإسماعيل وإسحاق إلها واحدا ونحن له مسلمون تلك أمة قد خلت لها ما كسبت ولكم ما كسبتم ولا تسألون عما كانوا يعملون وقالوا كونوا هودا أو نصارى تهتدوا قل بل ملة إبراهيم حنيفا وما كان من المشركين قولوا آمنا بالله وما أنزل إلينا وما أنزل إلى إبراهيم وإسماعيل وإسحاق ويعقوب والأسباط وما أوتي موسى وعيسى وما أوتي النبيون من ربهم لا نفرق بين أحد منهم ونحن له مسلمون فإن آمنوا بمثل ما آمنتم به فقد اهتدوا وإن تولوا فإنما هم في شقاق فسيكفيكهم الله وهو السميع العليم صبغة الله ومن أحسن من الله صبغة ونحن له عابدون قل أتحاجوننا في الله وهو ربنا وربكم ولنا أعمالنا ولكم أعمالكم ونحن له مخلصون أم تقولون إن إبراهيم وإسماعيل وإسحاق ويعقوب والأصباط كانوا هودا أو نصارا قل أأنتم أعلم أم الله ومن أظلم من كتم شهادة عنده من الله وما الله بغافل عما تعملون تلك أمة قد خلت لها ما كسبت ولكم ما كسبتم ولا تسألون عما كانوا يعملون أنت here this ends the first chapter um, and by chapter I don't mean surah right by chapter I mean the first part of 30 parts all right so there's various terminology here that if you're gonna be following that at any point in the future you need to, to be a little bit familiar with um, uh, a chapter is a, is a part of 30 parts a surah is a whole Oh, thank you, Amelia. Thank you. Barakallah. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, uh, so again, um, tomorrow, inshallah, I'm gonna be reading the next chapter. So, and hopefully explain a little bit of what I can explain. And there is a whole lot about what I've read today that I'd love to explain. And if I do, I'm gonna be streaming for 50 hours straight and I'm not gonna even be done with maybe few lines so we're gonna take it on a, you know as a long 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 journey and if 
when is the first uh, Rosa? What do you mean by Rosa? When is the first Rosa? What does Rosa mean? I don't understand. Ramadan? Yeah, today. Today marks the first day for Ramadan. Now, now, we are at Ramadan right now. So, uh, as I explained at the very... Thank you, thank you. Uh, as I explained in the very early beginning of this stream, uh, an hour and ten minutes ago, for us Muslims, the day starts at dusk, not at dawn, not at 12 a.m. No, no, it starts at uh, around 6 p.m. Uh, or the task, you know, uh, our day starts with the sun going down and there is a whole lot of physical explanation for that and why it's actually more important to think about your day as that starting from the, the sun going down not the sun going up or the sun, you know, or at 12 a.m. or anything like that um, uh, so we're uh, starting from 6 p.m. today or that was uh, five hours ago that already started, Ramadan started five hours ago so Yay! I love Ramadan. So, oh, thank you so much for the following. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Yeah, I'm Muslim too. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, something I'm always happy about to find other Muslims here. Um. Uh, so yeah, thank you so much for you know being here and uh, letting me know that uh, someone. Uh, I need to adjust the place of the chat. Okay, and thank you because now now I know that I need to bring my chat here, around here, and maybe make it a little bit bigger there. And save. And now the chat is on the left. For me, tomorrow is a Taraweeh prayer. Oh, wow. Yeah. It was today, actually, for us. Um, uh, it just ended an hour ago. Yeah, and uh, yeah, yeah uh, uh, perfect. Thank you. Thank you so much. I need to explain that. Ramadan. Uh, as I said uh, a couple of days ago, uh, the start for Ramadan is marked by the place of the moon. So it's all right and it's okay and it's natural to have it start a day earlier or a day after for uh, various nations around the globe. All right, because for us here in Egypt, the moon today marks the first day of Ramadan. But for someone maybe around uh, other places on the equator, maybe or someone other place either east or west, I don't know a little bit about. Uh, all of those possessions there, but as Emilia is saying here, um, uh, for her it can start more, and that's natural, that's normal, that's that's the right way, because it's based on the place of the moon in the sky and the position of the moon and how the moon looks. So, uh, wait, you didn't know that? Did I actually? Oh wow! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> I've become useful to someone. Yay! That's that, that, I love that. I love becoming useful to someone. Uh, that's natural because uh, that doesn't mean that you know that they are doing something that we're not doing. No, no, no. no. It's because that's. Not, I know. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, here is the plan now. Uh, what will happen? We have uh, till uh, when I'm gonna say till when? Till 4.49. Or uh, 4.49, it's gonna be Fajr or dawn, and that marks the end of the window that we can eat and drink at. So, uh, especially for someone like me who, you know, I do martial arts, I go to the gym, I am very active, I need to adjust my food schedule and my drinking schedule drinking i mean water and especially my coffee intake so i haven't drank my coffee for the day yet and the way that i do it in ramadan that i do it after the suhoor which is an, the meal that's coming next and i take my suhoor maybe in a couple of hours so uh this is what i'm gonna do now actually i'm gonna go out and get some groceries i'm gonna um prepare for my suhoor which is the meal uh, i uh, in ramadan i eat one meal per day maybe one and a half so there is uh, usually that meal that's, uh, that I'm gonna eat in one hour. That's I I live on one meal per day in Ramadan. Uh, so I only break my fast uh, when it's dusk. You know, as we said, once the sun goes down, you can start eating. So you can't keep fasting. No, no, you need to eat something. So I eat a little bit of dates, drink some water. But that's it. No, not not the big meal. No, no, no. I don't do that. The big meal comes after the gym, which is for me. Uh, 
maybe at 12, then around 12.30, 1 a.m., that's when I eat when I, my one meal per day in Ramadan. And I lose weight always in Ramadan. I become more muscular. It's, Ramadan is just, it's awesome for so many reasons. Um, and after I eat that meal, I drink the coffee, the one coffee per day also that I uh, drink in Ramadan. But I drink a lot of tea, a lot of green tea. So uh, hopefully I can keep that schedule as uh, I've been today. Uh, I'm gonna try as hard as I can. It's easier in Ramadan to keep a schedule because again, you have to keep a schedule uh, for your fasting and breaking fasting and all of that. Tomorrow, same time, I'm gonna be here. I'm gonna be reading Quran. Then I'm gonna go out and get uh, that meal that I'm talking about. And then I'll be back here streaming for four hours, five hours maybe all the team fight tactics and Valorant that we're gonna play. So uh, in one hour from now, one hour, 90 minutes or something, most important thing is that Ramadan teaches us how to have patience, sabr, shukr. Yes, yes, I, 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 I talked about that uh, maybe at the beginning when I started reading, I explained a little bit about the first two verses of uh, Surah uh, Al-Fatha actually, about how we praise the Lord and why we praise the Lord and uh, praise Allah. Yeah. By the way, I'm gonna be using, uh, well, well, actually I am by professional digital arts and I would love to design. <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you i'm waiting till i get 100 follower before doing something uh for my stream so uh it would be actually uh, it would be an honor for me as well but i need to wait uh, till 100 follower because i give that promise already at the very early in my streaming journey so uh, hopefully i can soon and I'll be working on those designs as well. And if I uh, and I'm gonna announce that now I'm at 100 followers, let's get uh, those designs done, guys. And either I'm gonna hire, either I'm gonna do it myself. I've talked about that before. So thank you so much, Amelia, for telling me about that. Thank you that uh, you told me about your uh, that you are a Muslim. And see you tomorrow, guys, at the same time. And see you again today after 90 minutes from now, inshallah. Mm, have an amazing day. Can we get in touch? Sure, my Discord link is on the thing. I'm gonna, my Discord, Discord, I'm gonna write here. Discord, here it is, Core Next One also. See you later. Bye bye.